Welcome back everybody to Dark Souls Remastered, where upon clicking back into my game, I may have angered somebody. On the crystal golems. Yep, and here he comes. Which he dev it looks so much more beautiful in uh the remake here. Uh in the in the original games, like the Xbox uh oh. Like the Xbox version, they didn't look great. Uh, they just looked like they were made of like a blue rock. Now they actually look to be made of crystal, which is excellent. Like, that is a brilliant crystal shine. Hopefully stagger him. Yep. Okay. What's important to note is uh, every enemy in the game and every NPC, I guess, everything that can be hit with a sword and take damage has a, a stat assigned to poise. So how much damage you can take before you get staggered. And uh, it seems that these guys, I found it. About two swings of my sword will break their poise. And these three gentlemen, not sure what they're guarding. Or if they're guarding anything, really. They don't like me. And to be honest, I don't really care for them. What are you three doing over here? Just... No? Okay. Um, I'll leave. No harm, no foul, I guess. I know there are items littered around this area. This is also an area that people very much enjoy to invade in. Ah, the crystalline set. We can actually take a look at that if no one's going to assault me. Yeah, these are not alphabetical order at all. Worn by a hollowed knight who is partially crystallized. Okay, that's important to know. Partially crystallized, not fully. No, that doesn't tell me much of anything, now does it? Partially crystallized. So actually, if you notice, when we fought Seath before, if you want to go back and watch that video, I actually died by crystallization. He'll do that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There we go. So these crystal golems are not a mistake in any way, shape, or form. These were made by Seath. And as... Sir, you're not standing on anything. Uh-oh. Yo, yeah, AoE. Oh, I walked in that, but I did not take damage, so I'm happy. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's bad geometry. Okay. Not not going to test that any more than I need to. Plus, I promised a, a, a trip into the Crystal Cavern. Second, I thought I saw a Crystal Lizard. Ah... Down we go. Crystal Cave. Wow, my memory for names is horrible. This area is a part that a lot of players find very frustrating. Partially due to these small catwalks, but also there's no real reprieve. fight those goobers and there's a long way to drop if you make a mistake in dodging or walking walking really shouldn't make that many mistakes however there are also secrets as you can tell 
There's a walkway here. Which most people don't realize is part of the shtick or the puzzle of this area. Is that there's hidden walkways and look at those. Those are moonlight butterflies. Just hanging out in the crystal cave. I can fight them. I can. Or I can leave them be. And the question is... Aha, here it is. So follow the snowflakes. If you don't follow the snowflakes, you're going to have a very bad time. You're going to fall off. This is also what the prism stones are for. The prism stones will help basic guide your way. Because you can throw them. Oh, and I made a mistake. Oh, he came with me. That was pretty nice of him. Oh, I keep saying him. I should say them. It's because it's a giant crystal creature. It doesn't have a gender. They were once people, but um, not quite anymore. Now they're more brainless, just guarding. And there's only going to be one in the entire game that we will pay special attention to. But for now, they're just brutes. And I will run by them. They're bullies. And what do you do to bullies? You ignore bullies. Goodbye, bullies. I don't have time for you. I have a very important appointment to make with a dear friend at the bottom of this cave. Not sure if that would have hit me or not, but I did not want to test it. Yeah, sometimes in a lot of these end areas, like just right there, there's a lot of oddity to geometry. Uh, did that one not come back? Um, right, right, that's not the way out. It's a cross. All right, where is our path? Is it right here? Yes, it is. And it traverses downward onto this next platform. So if I can just grab this and we just be cool, nope. Oh, you're much stronger than your friends are. Uh-oh. I'm trying to avoid rolling. As much as possible. That's exactly why I didn't want to roll. He died too, however. That's a good thing. Of course, Discord is sending me more messages. Of course. And I never closed Discord. <sighs> oh, I don't learn. No, well, I say that, but... I'm not doing too badly. Crystal Cave is, is typically a pain for people. Just in its nature. I'm confident Miyazaki designed it intentionally to be that way. Also, if you're wondering, what is this crystal doing? What is this giant cave doing here? And why is it next to the, the Duke's archives? Oh my goodness. Well, this 
Do you ever wonder why so many crystal things are used with Seath? He found a lot of use out of crystal. And discovered that crystals can have a lot of properties that he didn't he didn't know about before some research. And let's make sure we get this pathing right here. There we go. Got my straight shot. Huh. He does that guy doesn't come back, or that that creature doesn't return. It's good news for me. However, my next step down isn't here. No. Those aren't making contact with anything. Hmm. Oh. I ran off the path. Oh my. All right. I'm I'm trying to mentally recall where that path is supposed to be. I go, I'm playing out the the path in my head, and I th luckily, very luckily, it's not a far run, and there's not much in the way of danger between me and where I'm supposed to be going. Down, down I go. Hmm. If you can't tell, I have not played this area in quite a while. Partially because I actually really don't like this area. It's one of my least favorite areas in almost any Souls game, to be perfectly honest. Me in this area don't see eye to eye. Okay. Got my souls back. See, it's, it's pushing me down. And I believe it's just gonna push off to an end here. Unless, I'm gonna go for it. Okay, see, the, the, the geometry is just weird. Imminent fall. I don't believe you. Where's more snowflakes? So the fact there's no more snowflakes guiding me is concerning. But I do, I run to that. Yeah, I recall. Right there. And here come the clams. Ah, yes, the clams. I forgot about these. I absolutely despise these things. 
uh, just because they are so very weird. And they actually do a lot of damage, and if you... I wonder if they changed it, but they can also follow you into the next room, which is actually where the next boss fight will happen. So I'm hoping... Ah, uh, they're gonna come with me in here. Yeah, they're in here with me. I hope they reset. Everybody meet Seath. And this is his little immortality stick. It is now gone. Now I can actually win this fight. Oh, the clams came too. Oh, well, that helps. Nestle in right here. Yeah, that was bad. That was a huge AoE. Oh, open curse. Oh. So I want to stay out of the crystals. It's usually a good idea just to stay behind him, but this is an AoE attack. But if this builds up... Oh no... So Seath is in fact a dragon. So if I can, I'm gonna go for his tail. He's not just going to let me have it, however, of course. It'd be awfully nice if he would, though. Problem is, his tail has uh oh a certain hitbox. Ah, oh. the AOE is a problem. So for this fight, I am now realizing I need curse-resistant gear. So if you notice, curse resist is a stat on armor pieces. And most of my items don't have much curse except for caster gear. Ah, oh, the brass set is very good for curse resistance. Oh, I do have curse resistance on that. There's a lot of curse resist on this, actually. The dingy robe has 35 curse resist. What does my robe have? 21? This one has eight, nine, nine is my next best, best bet. Might have to go full dingy set. Oh yeah, we're just gonna go full dingy. I'm gonna get real dingy. Nineteen. 
Wow, okay, keeping those on. We still fast roll. Okay. Back down into the abyss to fight Seath. Unfortunately, this run is a bit longer than most other boss fight runs. And the Seath fight is notoriously difficult. Just because that giant AoE attack makes life a bit difficult. But, if you're keen, there is an audio cue that I'm not very good at listening to, apparently. One of the good things is, if you manage to stay behind him primarily, he won't hit you much with the AoE attack, because it won't extend as much far up that way. It goes mostly in front of him, which I don't really plan on being in front much. I'm going to be out into the sides more often than not. Let's line up our shot here. Where is... There it is. It's gonna run straight toward this pillar. The walkway is actually relatively wide, and I believe it actually has a branch off of it at some point, but I don't like to play that game. I fall enough as it is. And luckily now, we do have a fog gate. Oh, I don't like these st stupid clams. So they can't follow me in. But now, I actually have to run around him again. And get to his, his magic stick. He rebuilt it. Big crystals. Yep, 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 that's AoE. Look at how massive that AoE is. Oh, he's flailing. All right, back into the fray. Uh oh. Yeah, he doesn't like you being behind him. Yep. Is he just gonna keep doing that? Can you try and rotate towards me? Thank you. Uh-oh. Oh, we're fine. Oh, okay, we have more curse resist now, which is very good. Uh-oh, that's AoE. I... See, so he had to kind of get him to center himself before he'll actually attack. Come on, Seath. Come on, buddy. Stamina is going to be a huge friend in this fight. Just because you got to do a lot of running. 
Uh oh, AOE. I'm not standing in crystals. So Seath's tail is very valuable, and I really want it. But he does not give it up easy. That's a AOE, yep. I gotta heal. Uh, he's gonna stomp with his tail. Uh, give him the heal. Okay. Oh, come on. Stop doing that, Seath, please. Be cool, honey bunny. Oh, that was just a, a weird d hit detection thing there. Okay, bud. Okay. Okay. I see. You're upset. I hear you. However, I don't care. Let me get to that butt. You're being a real turd right now, Seath. Ah, oh my god. Come on. This is the one, actually, this, the, one of the two boss fights that actually gives me some stress. Just because it's, at any moment, I could die so fast. Oh, come on. Okay, I didn't get his tail. What? Okay. I heard him coming. <laughs> I heard the, I heard the clam. There we go. There we go. Get rid of that. So beautiful. It's so terrible. And we have just defeated Seath the Scaleless. Now let's take a look at his soul. Should be a brilliant soul. It's a key item, I forgot. Bequeathed Lord Soul Shard. Soul of the Albino Seath the Scaleless. A fragment of a Lord Soul discovered at the dawn of the Age of Fire. Seath allied with Lord Gwyn and turned upon the dragons, and for this he was awarded dukedom, embraced by the royalty, and given a fragment of a great soul. Although just peace, it will still satiate the Lord Vessel. Which is good, that's what we're here for. The bonfire is lit. And that is where I will end today's episode. But thank all of you so much for watching, and I will talk to you next time. Alrighty. See ya! You gotta, you gotta, you gotta rinse it around, you know? <laughs>